All right, guys, Arduino tutorial number three. First video, we looked at the Arduino Uno and we went through all of the hardware that's on this board. Uh, second video, we downloaded the Arduino IDE, hooked up our Arduino and made sure that we were communicating with it. And I believe on the previous video, we were talking over COM3. Now we're ready to actually wire something up. So we're gonna turn on an LED. So we're gonna wire something up with our breadboard and then we're gonna use our Arduino to program that LED to turn on. The parts that we're gonna need, guys, are a 330 ohm resistor. Now, if you're, like if you've purchased a starter kit and you don't have a 330 ohm uh, resistor, then grab a 220 ohm resistor. Uh, we really just need a resistor in line with the LED so we don't smoke it. If you just connect the LED up to the outputs of the Arduino Uno, you're most likely gonna smoke that LED over time. We need a resistor to limit the current to it. So we need, in this case, I'm gonna use the 330 ohm resistor the color code for that guy is an orange, orange, brown. The, go, the gold is just the tolerance there. Uh, we need a red LED and we need two jumpers. So I'm gonna use a red jumper for the positive and a white jumper for the negative. All right, let's jump into this. Uh, I'm gonna show you this really cool site. Give you two seconds to bring it up on the browser. Okay, so the site that I'm gonna to go to here is called fritzing.org. So fritzing.org. Uh, it's again, another open source hardware initiative similar to the Arduino, but this is really cool. Like even like five years, six years ago, um, the diagrams that we're doing for labs were really crude. Um, these are just doing phenomenal. This is a, a program that you can use that's open source to do phenomenal um, wiring diagrams for your Arduino projects. So I've downloaded this program. I'll open this guy up. So it's uh, right here. There we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project. And so I'm gonna go from the welcome tab to over to the breadboard tab. And that provides me with my standard breadboard. Um, and we'll bring in our Arduino Uno on the side there. And so let me just zoom out here to give ourselves some room. Let's rotate this guy uh, 90 degrees. Beautiful. We'll move this guy over and then we'll grab our Arduino. So it's really cool. I eh? think like there's our, our breadboard, standard breadboard. Um, I'll have to go through where continuity is on everything here, uh, but let me build up the circuit and then I'll show you how this breadboard works. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the right-hand side. We're gonna click on Arduino. So there's different bins of parts that are available in this program. A little bit slow right now. I'm rendering another video in the background here. So just give us 30 seconds here and it should bring up. There we go. Okay, so what do we got? Uh, we're looking for the Arduino Uno. So we're gonna grab this bad boy right here and we're gonna click on it and drag it over to the screen. Ah, uh, yes. So there's our Arduino right there. Sweet, okay, so now that we have these guys on both on the page, let's orient this just a little bit differently. I'm actually gonna bring this guy uh, back the other way. And let's see. No, easy now. Uh, I'm going to grab this guy and bring it up here. Looks good. And then let's zoom in and we'll take a look at the different terminals on our Arduino and how we're going to hook this guy up. So cool, eh? It's got everything that we saw on the first video going through the hardware there. Let's uh, scroll up here a bit and we'll be able to see what we're doing. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to make use of our digital outputs here. Uh, remember that on the previous video, I was saying that this LED right here is tied in parallel with pin number 13. So um, when we call on pin number 13 to turn on or go high, this LED will turn on as well. But we're going to have an external LED turn on at the same time. So we're going to go up here to core. So in the, going up to the right hand side to the parts, clicking on core here. Uh, and here's our um, different uh, things that we're going to grab in. Now, this resistor right here is a 220 ohm resistor. So depending on your package that you've grabbed, you may have 330 ohm resistors, you may have 220 ohm resistors. Uh, use whichever you have in your pack. Okay, and the other component that we're going to look for is the red LED. So I'm going to grab this scroller here and scroll down, uh, and there's my red LED right here. So I'm going to grab this bad boy and just bring it over to the side here so we can take a look at how it's oriented. Okay, so we have two sides to this LED now. The longer side right here is the anode, 
and the shorter side right here is the cathode. Uh, in terms of polarity, the anode is going to have a positive voltage applied to it, and the cathode is going to have a negative voltage applied to it. So the reason why I grabbed the LED first prior to grabbing the resistor was just to see how they oriented the image of the LED. So I'm going to grab this guy, bring it onto my breadboard now, and you'll see very quickly that it connects into the different terminals on the breadboard. So if I drop this guy right now, then it'll drop right onto the, the board and it will have continuity with those two terminals. I'm going to bring it up a bit so I can have some room to put in my resistors and everything. Uh, but yeah, let's see, I'm going to drop it in right about there. Okay, and now you can see that um, it's really cool. This terminal right here for the anode is having continuity with all of these pins right here. So on a breadboard, it has continuity on these, what is this, these five terminals. And again, these five terminals have continuity and these five terminals have continuity, uh, but there's no continuity between adjacent terminals beside each other. So up and down we have continuity, but there's no continuity from side to side. In addition to that, there are two power rails on the bottom here. So there's a, a larger power rail that goes right across with continuity right across. And below we have um, continuity again below on this power rail right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a jumper go from uh, pin number 13. And I'm going to bring that guy up. And I'm going to bring it to this point right here. Okay. And at that point I have continuity now. Or I have a conductor that goes from pin 13 into this terminal right here. All of these bad boys have continuity, so I've now connected pin 13 up to the anode of the LED. Okay, then I'm going to bring in my resistor. Okay, the resistor is going to limit the current in there. If I just hook up my Arduino straight to um, my LED, then most likely I'm going to smoke it. So I'm going to drop in that resistor. And you can see there that uh, the resistor has continuity between the cathode and these five terminals right here. Excellent. I need to finish off this circuit now. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a jumper that goes from the ground and goes over to any of those five terminals right there. Beautiful. At that point, we are done our circuit. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll fire on uh, the LED. When we fire on that LED, remember that this LED is also in parallel with it, so it will, it will turn on as well. To me, this just blows me away. I mean, this is just phenomenal, because I can just take a screenshot here, um, and then as an instructor, I can just drop that into my PowerPoint, uh, and I have all my parts that I can show right here. Right Then I can show how to hook everything up on this diagram right here. And then I can drop this in as a PDF and give it to my students or to you guys. And it just provides everybody with a way to wire up that circuit. The cool thing about uh, Fritzing is that you can, uh, you can drop your code in as well. So I can drop in my code here. Um, I can drop it into or download it to or upload, I guess, to my Arduino Uno. Um, and I can, using the Arduino in the background, the IDE, um, it will actually send my code to the Arduino board and I can see how this guy works. Uh, I haven't figured out how it provides uh, an animation. I don't think it does provide an animation here, but that would be really cool if you could put your code in here um, and then animate um, this circuit here, that would be mint. All right, guys, so obviously the next thing to do is put in our code into our Arduino sketch. You'll notice here in the Arduino sketch there are two portions to it. So right here we have the void setup. The void setup down to here uh, will run once. You'll notice that they put a comment in here. So I haven't put this in. This sets up right away when you open up the Arduino sketch. And in order to put a comment in, you put these two backslashes here, and then the Arduino will negate anything that comes after it. So in order to put a comment in, we're going to put two backslashes there. The void setup is going to run once, and that's it. You'll notice that it starts with an open parentheses right here. And then to close this, we have the closing parentheses down here. Below that, we have the void loop. And it's just explaining exactly what it does here. The main code goes here. 
and it's going to run repeatedly. Again, we have the double slash there in order to provide our, our comment. And we're starting with an open parenthesis. And at the end of the void loop, we're going to close it with a close parenthesis. So up here, we're going to set up things like pin modes and everything. And then down here, we'll run our main program. This is going to run once the void setup. This is going to continuously run. So it will go through all of our instructions and then right up to the top and run again. Go right all down and then run again until we press stop. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the Arduino that pin 13 is an output. Okay, so right here we've got pin 13. Uh, these guys right here could be either an input or an output. So we need to provide the Arduino sketch uh, with the instruction to tell that 13 is going to act as an output. Okay. The way to do that is we'll just come up here to this line and we're going to put in pin mode. You'll notice that as soon as I finish off pin mode with the E, it's going to change color. Okay. If I write this without that capital M, nothing. So there is bumpy text that's used here. Uh, you can see here that everything is lowercase. The M is a an uppercase. And so once we put the appropriate syntax in there, then we get the proper instruction. So we're going to put pin mode, then we're going to put a brackets, and we're going to say, all right, 13, terminal 13 is going to be an output. So we're going to put caps, and we're going to put an output. And as soon as I put the T, it will hopefully change color. Ah. Excellent. Okay, so take a look at that. It's turning into a blue there. Then we're going to close the bracket. And then at the end of every line, we need to put a semicolon. Okay, it will not like your program if you don't put in the semicolons. Okay, so uh, the orange is the command, right? This is our argument right here. And we're telling that the pin 13 is going to act as an output. Okay, don't forget to put this as an all caps for the output. And then for the pin mode, don't forget to make the M a capital letter. Excellent. That's all we need to do so far. In the void loop, what we're going to do is we're going to come right here. And we're going to digitally write. Oh, that's in the wrong syntax here. Digital. And then we've got capital W, R-I-T-E. There we go. Okay. So you'll notice there that, again, we have the bumpy text. Bumpy text in that we've got the lowercase, and then we've got an uppercase for the M lowercase for digital and then an uppercase for the w there if i again if i do not put that in properly then nothing sets up okay so i need to capital w r i t e and all of a sudden it goes orange and we're ready to rock and roll okay so what i need to do is i need to go to pin 13 again and all i want to do so far is i just want to turn that led on so we're not going to flash it or anything yet we just want to turn it on so we want to say that it's going to be a high. And again, this has to be in all caps. So we're putting high there. And then at the end of our instruction, we want to put a semicolon. Okay, so one more time here. Again, lowercase digital, uppercase W, using that bumpy text for the digital right. And then we're saying output pin number 13. And how do we know it's an output? Because up here in the void setup, we've used pin mode. And we've said that pin 13 is going to act as an output. And we want it to go high, meaning that we want to have 5 volts coming out of that terminal there. So again, on the digital pins, we have 0 volts or we have 5 volts. If we wanted the 0, we would say low. If we wanted the 5 volts, we say high. Okay, And that's all we need for our first sketch. That's it. Set up your pin mode, make pin 13 an output, and then turn it on by using the digital right. Okay, so similar to the PLC programs that you guys have been looking at, we want to verify this. So we'll go here and we'll verify that everything's good. Oh, and it's asking us to save this sketch. Okay, so uh, let's say turn an LED on. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, Ta -da. looks good. Okay, and we'll verify it's compiling the sketch there. And we want to see green right across here. Taking a little bit of time to do that. Beautiful.
Okay, everything's cool. It's got you 724 bytes, 2% of program storage space. Maximum is 32,256. Global variable is using 9 bytes, leaving na -na 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 and everything looks mint. Beautiful. Okay, everything's cool. Okay, we verified the program. Uh, we can go here to tools. Again, I've shown you earlier that you can see that it is talking to the Arduino Uno. I have that. Um, I have my USB tied into the Arduino. And the port that we were talking to was COM3. Looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press this button right here. So we verified that everything was cool with our program and there's no problems with it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to upload it to our Arduino. So we're going to click on this now. Again, below here, you can see that it's compiling the sketch. Problem uploading to the board. Okay, so what happened there? Well, I told you guys what to do and then I didn't do it myself. So I needed to go to tools. I needed to come down here and make sure that the appropriate board was selected. So Arduino Uno, that looks good. Uh, but I hadn't selected the COM3 yet. So when I tried to download it previously, it was trying to go through COM1. So I've now selected COM3 and we should be ready to rock and roll. Uh, and now you can see that the lights are quite bright. If I try and download this right now, we won't be able to see the, uh, the LED turn on. So let's download this now and we'll dim the lights here. There we go. And when I hit download, you should see the TX and RX LEDs flash and notice. And then this bad boy is obviously going to turn on. Ready for it? We're uploading it now. Ah, yes. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. That's it. Pin 13 is an output. 13 has gone high. There's now 5 volts going to our LED. We have the resistor to limit the current there. Uh, and now, obviously, you saw there how I deleted that. If we want to make this guy turn off, then we'll push put in low. And by putting in low, it'll take that digital output 13 and put zero voltage. So again, we're going to upload that to our Arduino. It's off. There we go. Okay, so now we have a way to turn an LED on or turn any output on and off. Okay, once we go high and upload this guy one more time, then we'll see that it turns on. Beautiful. Okay, so just as a recap, we went over the void setup. This runs once. So in this case, we've set up our pin mode and set up pin 13 as an output. Okay, once it hits this close parentheses, then it stops, moves down to the void loop. The void loop continuously runs until we either unplug the Arduino and, or until we uh, stop the program. So all we're doing here was we're doing a digital write to pin 13 and we're telling that to go high. High meaning 5 volts and we can see there that the 5 volt is going out to the LED and firing on that bad boy on and if we wanted to do the opposite, if we wanted to turn something off, then we'll put low and we will download that guy and it should turn off. Beautiful. All right, guys, so we'll finish off there. That's a pretty good start. We've gone through how to use the fritzing to set up a, a, a diagram. I've actually found a really cool program uh, in just trying to figure out how to animate that fritzing. I found another program that we can use on the next video. So we can animate the Arduino. I'll show you that on the next video. Uh, but now we're able to set up everything on our Arduino sketch here, send that signal over to the Arduino, and be able to control our load there. Looks good. All right, guys, we'll finish up there. Thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.